His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received yesterday in the presence of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the BDF Commander in Chief, a Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, and a number of officials at Safriya Palace, the US Secretary of State Antony Blinken, on the occasion of his visit to the Kingdom as part of his current tour in a number of countries in the region. His Majesty welcomed the US Secretary of State and reviewed with him the course of bilateral relations and the means of developing them and strengthening the frameworks of cooperation and joint work in all fields. His Majesty expressed Bahrain's pride in, in its historical relations and close partnership with the US, which span a long history of mutual understanding, cooperation and coordination to enhance common interests at all levels. He stressed the Kingdom's keenness to strengthen strategic partnership relations and its aspiration to strengthen coordination and cooperation with the US to achieve the common interests of the two countries and their peoples. During the meeting, regional and international developments were also discussed, as well as the latest developments in the Middle East, including the situation in the Gaza Strip. His Majesty the King stressed the necessity of achieving a ceasefire, protecting civilians, releasing hostages and detainees, ensuring the delivery of humanitarian aid to the residents of the Gaza Strip in accordance with international humanitarian law and preventing the displacement. The US Secretary of State stressed the US's support for concrete measures to establish a Palestinian state, stressing the rejection of the forced displacement of Palestinians, whether in Gaza or the West Bank. The two sides also stress the importance of reaching a comprehensive and lasting peace in the Middle East, as it is the optimal way to enhance security, stability and peace in the region for the interest of its people, as well as working to avoid exacerbating the conflict in a manner that threatens regional peace. In a statement following his meeting with His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa yesterday, the US Secretary of State Antony Blinken affirmed that Bahrain is a critical partner for the US. He also affirmed that the discussion with His Majesty focused on the ongoing conflict in Gaza, not spreading to other places. Bahrain is part of what has been an intensive diplomatic push across the region. Uh, Bahrain, of course, is a critical partner for the United States, home to the Fifth Fleet, and I want to thank his Majesty King Hamad for receiving us today and for the very good conversation. Um, we were focused uh, on making sure that the conflict uh, ongoing now in Gaza doesn't spread uh, to other places. That's been our focus since, uh, since October 7th, uh, and it remains our focus uh, today. Um, that makes it particularly important that we respond when we see something like the aggression coming from the Houthis that continues to be uh, repeated, directed at shipping in the uh, Red Sea. Uh, there have been uh, thousands, hundreds of attacks now since uh, November uh, on shipping in the Red Sea, affecting um, more than 40 countries, tied to, to ships with, uh, from 40 different countries. Uh, and uh, we had the biggest attack, UAVs, missiles, just yesterday. Um, these attacks have been aided and abetted by Iran with technology, equipment, uh, intelligence, information, and they are having a real-life impact on people. You know, we talk about concepts like freedom of navigation and the importance of holding it, and I know that can sound a little bit uh, abstract, but it means something very real in the lives of people. What's happened because of these Houthi attacks against commercial shipping is that thousands of ships have had to divert, uh, take longer routes, pay more for insurance, and that gets translated into higher prices for people for everything from uh, fuel to medicine to food. It's disrupting supply chains. And so it's having a real impact on people around the world um, in uh, their daily lives. We know all about the hostages in Gaza. Well, the Houthis have taken more than 25 hostages from the ships that they've seized since, um, uh, since this fall. So all of this has required us, this, this challenge, this threat to the interests of countries around the world has required us to respond. We put together Operation Prosperity Guardian uh, with um, more than 20 countries, including uh, Bahrain, 
uh, to do everything we can to preserve freedom of navigation, freedom of shipping in the Red Sea. And in fact, uh, the United States and the United Kingdom, two participants in Operation Prosperity Guardian, responded effectively to the attacks just yesterday. Uh, we also had um, uh, some 20 countries come together to make clear that uh, if these attacks continue, as they did yesterday, there will be consequences. Uh, again, this represents a clear threat to the interests of countries around the world, and it's important that the international community come together and respond to them. His Majesty King Hamid Misa Al Khalifa issued Decree 1 of 2024, appointing a Director General at the Maharak Municipality, based on a proposal by the Minister of Municipality Affairs and Agriculture, and following the approval of the Cabinet. According to the Royal Decree, Khalid Ali Hussein Agalaf should be appointed as Director General of the Maharak Municipality. His Majesty the King also issued Decree 2 of 2024, appointing an Assistant Under Secretary at the Ministry of Municipality Affairs and Agriculture, based on a proposal by the Minister of Municipality Affairs and Agriculture, and following the approval of the Cabinet. According to the Royal Decree, Ibrahim Yosef Ahmed Yosef was appointed as Under Secretary for Animal Wealth Resources at the Ministry. His Majesty also issued Decree 3 of 2024, appointing an Assistant Undersecretary at the Ministry of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, based on a proposal by the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, and following the approval of the Cabinet. According to the Royal Decree, Naif Khalifa Ibrahim al Thawadi was appointed as Assistant Undersecretary for Courts, Affairs and Enforcement at the Ministry. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and Chairman of BAPCO Energies, His Highness Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the UAE Minister of Industry and Advanced Technology, Managing Director and CEO of the Abu Dhabi National Oil Company and President of the 28th Conference of the Parties, COP28, Dr Sultan Ahmed Al Jaber. His Highness congratulated the UAE on the successful hosting of the COP28 conference, which was held in Dubai last December that contributed to transformative global climate action. His Highness Sheikh Nasser emphasised the importance of establishing effective partnerships with leading institutions in the energy sector to achieve sustainability, in line with the directors of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Nasser commended Dr Al Jaba for his management of COP28 and his commitment to implementing the vision of the UAE's leadership which emphasises the importance of achieving advanced global position in sustainable development. The meeting discussed cooperation in the energy sector, as well as ways to strengthen partnerships to develop the national economy. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, patronised a Deputy Prime Minister, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, to attend the signing ceremony of a number of agreements between the Member States of the Higher Committee of the Industrial Partnership for Sustainable Economic Growth, whose fourth meeting is hosted by Bahrain. Upon arrival, a Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah was received by the Ministry of Industry and Commerce, Adil Fakro, and a number of officials. Before the signing ceremony, Sheikh Khalid met with UAE Minister of Industry and Advanced Technology, Dr Sultan Al Jabo, the Jordanian Minister of Industry, Trade and Supply, Yusuf Al Shamali, the Egyptian Minister of Trade and Industry, Engineer Ahmed Samir, and the Moroccan Minister of Industry and Trade, Riyad Mazur. The Deputy Premier wished that the meeting achieve its goals of an industrial partnership to contribute in enhancing the sustainability of the economies of the Member States in line with the vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the GCC leaders. He affirmed that Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty the King and with the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, attaches great importance to the complementary partnership between Arab countries, especially in the industrial sector, to strengthen economic bonds. He noted the importance of the industrial partnership between Bahrain and Arab countries in the current period in consolidating the ability of member states to permanently adapt to the accelerating global economic changes in a better way. Sheikh Khalid expressed hope that in the next stage, the committee will include more Arab countries for the benefit of the region. He welcomed Morocco's accession to the industrial partnership. The Deputy Premier then attended the ceremony of announcing and signing Morocco's accession to the industrial partnership which was signed by the Ministers of Industry of the five Member States. 
He also attended the signing ceremony of partnership agreements and the announcement of projects whose combined value is estimated at approximately 2.2 billion US dollars, including the supply agreement between Bahrain Steel Company and Emirates Steel Company, which is the largest since the announcement of the industrial partnership. During his visit to Austria, the Interior Minister, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, met ambassadors of the GCC countries in Vienna. He met them during his visit to the headquarters of the permanent GCC mission, where he was received by the head of the mission, Dr. Ali Abdullah Al Jader. The Interior Minister said that the regional situation, security changes, and the GCC principles that require reinforcing Gulf security work to improve security capabilities in facing challenges and the success of the joint Gulf security process. The Interior Minister also visited the Spanish Riding School, where he was received by the school's Chief Executive Officer, Alfred Hudler. He was briefed on the school's procedures and services, highlighting the importance of training and seeking the best expertise in achieving competency and professionalism. The Interior Minister praised the efficiency, fitness and honourable performance of the Bahraini Knights in all local and international tournaments, noting the readiness of the Mounted Police and dedication to perform the tasks and duties assigned to them. The visit reviewed training, cooperation and exchange of expertise between the school and the mounted police. Bahrain hosted the International Forum on Social Emotional Learning, organised by the Gulf Arab States Educational Research Centre, GASERC, in Kuwait, in collaboration with the Ministry of Education in Bahrain, in the presence of the Minister of Education, Dr. Mohammed bin Mubarak Juma, with the participation of officials and educational specialists. The Minister praised the GASERC's role in unifying the GCC country's efforts in developing education systems, affirming the Kingdom's honour in hosting events that contribute to boosting the quality of teaching methods and the academic and cognitive outcomes of students. Director of GASERC, Dr Mohammed al Shakrika, expressed pleasure with Bahrain's hosting of the forum, which affirms its interest in the centre's activities. The participants discussed three working papers, Social Emotional Learning, Its Concept and Importance, successful experiences in developing and measuring students' social and emotional learning skills, and methods and strategies for integrating social and emotional learning competencies in education. Um, so the objectives of my talk are to look at how social and emotional learning is integrated into education. So um, that means how um, 
whatever we understand by social and emotional skills like communication skills or resilience or um, team working, how that is integrated into school policies and practices and that could be uh, national education policy, what governments design, but also it could be um, then how schools enact that policy and integrate that into their classroom and school schooling um, practices. The General Directorate of Reformation and Rehabilitation continues to provide all necessary care services to inmates and among these services enabling student inmates to register in various educational levels in coordination with the Ministry of Education. The General Directorate of Reformation and Rehabilitation works to provide all necessary services of care to inmates in implementation of the Reformation and Rehabilitation Institution Law and its executive regulations in a way that reflects the integrated application of the human rights values and standards. The Reformation and Rehabilitation Centre for Inmates cares about education, as books are provided well in advance of exams. Pre-coordination is made with the Ministry of Education to supervise the examinations on a specified date. Each building has educational halls equipped with all the tools that help students take the exams required. Within these services, students and mates are enabled to register in various educational levels, provided books, and submit exams in coordination with Ministry of Education. The General Directorate of Reformation and Rehabilitation is keen to provide positive conditions that enable inmates to continue their education and take exams in accordance with established regulations, which will affect them positively after they serve their sentence. First, I need to say thank you for my king to give me a chance for finish my exam and finish my college in my jail. And uh, I say thank you for all the police about to give me time for learn before the, my exam and for everything too easy. I will talking about uh, the exams here. Everything is okay. Everything uh, was smoothly. The procedure, the, the classes uh, organized everything. Uh, we can do everything here. Um, so we feel, com feel comfortable about that. The right to education remains one of the main human rights, which is included in an extensive list of services provided to inmates. Public Health Director Dr. Mohamed Alawadi affirmed continuing the efforts of the Environmental Health Department aimed at reducing the spread of mosquitoes. Dr. Alawadi revealed the intensification of mechanisms to protect people in partnership with the private sector, according to scheduling and preventative plans, targeting many areas to be sprayed with insecticide. He noted keenness to take the necessary measures immediately after receiving complaints. The director stressed the importance of cooperation on the part of citizens and residents to ensure that all preventative measures are followed in homes and residential areas to limit the spread of mosquitoes. The Spring of Culture Festival kicks off tonight and will continue until March the 20th. This festival highlights Bahrain's rich cultural heritage and unique historical landmarks while presenting to residents and visitors of the country boundless opportunities for education, exploration and entertainment. Since its first edition in 2006, the festival has represented a qualitative shift in Bahraini cultural scene as it is a joyful event in which visitors meet various cultures in one place. The Spring of Culture, in its various editions, shed light on various cultural institutions and archaeological sites in the Kingdom to emphasise the importance of preserving cultural heritage and transmitting it to next generations. The United Kingdom Maritime Trade Operations said five masked gunmen wearing black military-style uniforms have boarded a crude oil tanker in the Gulf of Oman. The St Nicholas crude oil tanker's owners have said they lost contact with the ship early Thursday morning. The incident was reported 50 nautical miles east of Oman's Sohar. Security experts say the ship's tracking system has been turned off and the vessel is believed to be headed towards Banda Iljask in Iran. A spokesperson at Empire Navigation, managers of MT St Nicholas, confirmed that the vessel is manned with a total of 19 crew members, 18 Filipino and one Greek nationality. 
Reports say those boarding the ship had covered the surveillance cameras as they boarded. The UN Security Council adopted a resolution condemning in the strongest terms multiple Houthi attacks on ships in the Red Sea over the past two months, which have raised concerns over disruptions in global trade and regional security. Eleven council members have voted for Resolution 2722 related to the Houthi attacks, none against, while Russia, China, Algeria and Mozambique abstained. The council demanded that the group immediately cease such behaviour and release the Galaxy leader, a Japan-operated cargo ship with links to an Israeli businessman and its 25 crew members. Authored by the US and Japan, the resolution stated that there should be respect for international law that upholds the exercise of nas- navigational rights and freedoms by operators of merchant and commercial vessels. Sources in Turkey have said that Ankara continues its contacts with Russia and the United Nations to discuss the resumption of work on Black Sea Grain deal that stopped last July. Russia pulled out of the deal because its part of the deal had not been upheld and has long said that it has not received its proportion of the deal. World leaders have urged Russia to rejoin an agreement that safely delivered Ukraine's grain worldwide and stabilised food prices. Since Russia's withdrawal, US officials have said that they're working with Turkey, Ukraine and other allies to salvage the deal and bolster other export routes from Ukraine. Turkey, meanwhile, has said any initiative to revive the Black Sea grain deal that excludes Russia will not be sustainable. The World Health Organization said almost 10,000 COVID-19 deaths were reported in December of last year, as it warned the virus remained a major threat despite partially passing under the radar. The WHO said data from various sources pointed to increased transmission last month, fueled by gatherings over the Christmas holiday period, and by the JN1 variant, which is now the most commonly reported around the globe. Besides the near 10,000 deaths reported to the WHO last month, there was a 42% increase in hospitalizations and a 62% increase in intensive care admissions compared with November. However, the figures are based on data from less than 50 countries, mostly in Europe and the Americas. UN Health Agency's chief Tedros Ghebreyesus urged governments to maintain virus surveillance and sequencing and to ensure access to affordable and reliable tests, treatment and vaccines.